I'm a loss of words right now, man. I'm speechless of, of just the view and just the, the it's, it's so grand. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like I'm actually here, even though I'm not. I got my headset on and hopefully we can get out of here before the weather gets too bad. What is going on? Beautiful, beautiful people. Welcome back. It's your boy, Blue. And as you can see, I'm sitting here in VR. I'm using the new Pimax Crystal VR headset. And I've been waiting a long time to get this opportunity to show this off to you guys. And this is the perfect chance to do so in this brand new H160 Airbus helicopter by High Performance Group. I have a lot of respect for that team, for those guys. Every product that I've tried out from them has been just quality, been amazing, and I can't wait to fly this baby. So right now, we're sitting here in the cockpit of the Airbus H160 on the helipad here um, in Torino, Italy. This is actually is uh, a building that used to be um, owned by an Italian fa uh, manufacturer, uh, Fiat. I'm not sure if they still own it, but um, it's a pretty cool building. It used to have a test track on top of the building. I don't see that in the scenery, but we have a, um, I have a, a full flight today of people ready to head out to the mountains. We're heading uh, northbound towards Geneva, but not to uh, Geneva. We're headed to a place called uh, Medjete or something like that on top of a mountain. So it's going to be pretty interesting. As you can see, the man, the, the, the clouds don't look too great. But anyways, let's go do what we came here to do. And that is fly this beautiful bird and do it in VR. So I'm going to get my tablet here. You can see we have our doors and whatnot. So we can go ahead and shut the rear doors. Left and the right. And we can shut her door on the left. There we go. And we can also, I can actually reach over and shut the door myself. Now, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim does not yet support actual VR hand controllers. So you do have to use your mouse uh, and keyboard for the most part. Let's get, the, let's get this baby started up. It's actually fairly simple. So I got my checklist here in front of me. We can kind of go through that. Um, but I pretty much remember how to fly. We'll first start off with our battery. Battery one and battery two. Generator one and generator two. Set to on, watch the reach over here and hit the FA, uh, which needs to be on, as well as the F and S one and two need to be on. We'll also te test the lamps. Test. Just like that. You can see everything is lit up very, very nicely. Sweet, that is working. Reach down here, make sure our brakes are indeed set. The brakes are set. I'm using the GTN 750 today, which is uh, actually the TDS model. It's a GT GTNXI. It's a pay where uh, Add-on is actually 100% compatible with this aircraft. You can also use the freeware one by PMS that works, or you could decide to, to not use either and just use the default. Taz, system test okay. That's a little loud. Uh, you can use the default one. So uh, we'll be flying out to, I think it's Lima Foxtrot something. What was it again? That's going to be Lima Foxtrot Mike Hotel right there in our F or, uh, GTN. Okay, so all of our flight information is done in our uh, GTN for our GPS. We'll go ahead and go down here and turn on the emergency uh, exit lights to arm. See, yeah, they're on arm, anti-collision lights on, position lights on, and landing lights to on for the pilot side. You can also switch it to the other side as well. Uh, we'll also make sure our anti-collision lights are set to white. I learned that uh, for daytime, you want your anti-collision lights set to white. For nighttime, it's going to be red. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and start the engines up. Starting with engine number one, set to idle. All right, idle is set. And we can now look up and see that our prop rotors are spinning. It's actually a fairly complex aircraft. There's a lot you can do here on these screens. I'm not going to go into all of that. There's plenty of videos out there on that already. Today we're just going to enjoy it. We're going to fly it. We're going to be challenged by some, uh, you know, low visibility of flying, some mountain flying, and then, you know, obviously landing and taking off on that helipad. So let's go and make sure our fuel is set here on that EFB. Uh, we'll do 25%. There should be plenty of fuel to get us where we want to go. But this is the same EFB you'd be familiar with if you have used the H145. 
um, from High Performance Group. If you have it, uh, then the, this uh, iPad that they have here is very powerful. You can do a lot of things all the way from uh, open and closed doors, weight and balance. You can actually set the autopilot as well on here, which is all extremely helpful. So we'll definitely be using that later on. But we are ready to basically switch these engines into flight idle here, which I'm gonna do now. Lights and flight on both engines, there they go. Everything else in the overhead looks good. We are not gonna do an automatic takeoff today. Or should we? You know what, screw it. We will do an automatic takeoff today because that's one of the uh, really special features about this aircraft. So that's going into idle. We're gonna switch down here and hit the autopilot trim switches. That's gonna make the aircraft a whole lot easier to fly. Our parking brake is set and on. When we'll reach the top and turn on the NR high switch, this is all gonna help us for the automatic vertical takeoff here. I'll go into my main screen here in front of me and we'll go to TO here on the left side. I'm gonna do a, uh, we'll do a straight up vertical takeoff. You could also do a rearward so the aircraft would, or the helicopter would take off and go backwards on its own. We're just gonna do a straight up vertical takeoff since um, we're, we're pretty good with that. And we'll also set our uh, altitude for that climb, that automatic climb to about 200. Um, should be good. And we'll hit the center button, we'll click on that to confirm it. That's good, we'll switch our um, screen here to Synthetic Vision, SVS. We can now see kind of an idea what's in front of us. Uh, it's not very accurate where we're standing right now, but uh, we'll go to this button here, it's gonna switch over to hover mode. That's all we need to do. And now, all I need to do is just take off myself, get into a slight hover, and then I'm gonna hit the, um, the hover button, which is gonna put us into an automatic hover, and then I'm gonna click on the go round button. All these buttons can be mapped to your joystick or hotel, so if you don't want to, you could also um, just click inside the iPad here. And leave that on here, so we go, let's give it a try. So we're gonna come up with our collective here. Adding power. See the, air, the helicopter wants to go to the left a little bit and pull back as we don't want to get too close to that bubble up ahead. There we go, and we're in ground effect a little bit here. It's not as easy as sound getting to just a slight hover. That works. I'm gonna double tap the hover button. There we are. Aircraft is now hands off. It's hovering on its own. I'm now gonna click on the go around button that I have on my throttle. And now the aircraft is by itself with no hands lifting off and it's gonna clear the platform for us. Let's go straight up basically. If we had selected the rearward, it would take off. It would go up and then backwards just a little bit. But um, it's gonna bring us up about 200 feet AGL and then um, and then it will basically hand uh, go into autopilot, hand the controls back over to us. We're gonna continue out. But I mean, this is pretty cool. I mean, I think look at that. We're already there. We already took off maybe about 100 feet in in the air off of the uh, the platform. So it won't take us very long to get there. But it's very smooth. It's not jerking. Not a jerking motion. It's it's very very chill. You can also see we have green highlighted here on our uh, MFD. I'm not sure how well you guys were able to see. Um, these things like in, in VR it looks really clear especially with the Pimax crystal um, the reason why it's called crystal because things in VR are actually crystal clear and in the past I've had other VR headsets that are not so clear everything's blurry you can't do any IFR flying you can't see literally anything in the in your screen it's really inconvenient um, so being able to see everything in the cockpit is a very huge benefit that the Pimax crystal gives you and we're gonna have to stay nice and low as you can see it is very very foggy I'm hoping that these clouds will uh, move out here soon. It looks like we've gotten to the top there. I'm gonna hit go around now again. And now the aircraft is going to fly itself away from the area. Man, that looks so cool. It legit feels like we're 200 feet in the air. Oh man, that's so cool. Still, I'm still hands off by the way. All I did was hit the go around button. Warning, obstacle. So I believe we are going to need to uh, make a left turn. We're gonna go that way. So it's yelling at about obstacles and stuff like that. I'm not sure why. I mean, mainly because of the city down here. All right, now the aircraft has gone into autopilot. And now what I can do is I can just basically turn those autopilot functions off, turn off vertical speed, turn off heading, turn off IAS here in the iPad. And now it is my aircraft, my controls. I am now controlling it. It's really cool. Makes this aircraft a whole lot easier to fly. And honestly, this aircraft is already extremely easy to fly flying either this or the H145 will actually be pretty easy for you. Right now flying over um, like some freight train uh, yard and you guys know me, I love me some trains so hey why not get down and dirty 
close to some train tracks here in Italy. This is pretty cool. So I'm really hoping that this, uh, <laughs> this fog, these low clouds will clear out because uh, we have a lot of mountains to fly through on our way to where we're going today. Um, in fact, I think we're landing in a mountain, so that's going to be interesting. Um, another cool feature we can actually turn on, which will definitely help us a little bit, to go to the D map page here. And we should see right there we have our map. That is freaking cool. And VR, oof, man, that is nice. That is really nice. So, man, I'm going to be honest. So this, this video is kind of a mixture of, like, my first time really getting a chance to try the Pimax Crystal VR headset uh, in Microsoft Flight Sim. Uh, but it's also my, you know, not my first time flying the H160. I've been flying it like all week, enjoying it, loving it, practicing it for for this video specifically. But um, this is my first time kind of combining the two, and also my first time flying in this part of Italy. So, so oh, we got some power lines coming up. So there's a lot of things of, of unknowns that I have for this particular flight, but I knew it would be a really nice flight because of just how populated the buildings are in this part of Italy. Um, and also having be able to fly over the mountains as well. Really, really looking forward to that. And again, hoping that this weather clears up a little bit. But man, again, you get the sense of speed flying in VR. You get the sense of height flying in VR. And again, you get the sense of depth. You can also see that the trees are now changing colors because we are recording this in the fall because of uh, Rex Accu seasons, which is pretty darn sweet. Oh man, this is not looking good. We're gonna definitely have to plot our way through these mountains as you can see we're getting here to the mountains and we're gonna have to find our way through here I know caution terrain caution terrain I heard it the first time but the beautiful thing about being in VR man is you really have 360 degrees of freedom here being able to just look everywhere I can kind of move my head like, alright I can see the top of these mountains and kind of gain some altitude wrap around yeah that's a dead end <laughs> that's not good but that's okay i think we can make that it's gonna add a little bit more throttle we got the power to do it it's a very fast very uh capable helicopter to be honest with you man that looks good oh i can't wait to see this this fly over here all right we go clock getting some altitude to get over these mountains and yeah, I mean, eh, <laughs> it's not looking too good. We may have to just kind of skirt over top right now. We're about 3,500 feet up. But we're gonna have to continue gaining some more altitude as we cut through these mountains or else we have to dive down there and can't see nothing down there. You know, believe it or not, you know, despite the extremely low visibility today I am using live weather um, this is actually a good kind of example of this you know what you are able to overcome with this helicopter I mean having the glass cockpit really helps with situational awareness when flying through an environment like this I mean I definitely wouldn't have done this flight if I didn't have the synthetic vision here I can actually see the mountains up ahead and kind of get an idea what's ahead even if I can't necessarily see it um, we also have the autopilot control. I can go here and hit auto, auto, uh, altitude hold. And we're actually all the way up at 6,700 feet right now. 6,700 feet right now. And it's performing great still. Uh, we're doing about 130 indicated. I'm not exactly sure what our ground speed is right now. Um, actually, our ground speed is... Yeah, our ground speed is actually 142 knots. And I can also hit the IAS hold, and it will hold that the, um, that speed. And if I wanted to, I could also set nav mode as well, and it'll also hold um, a flight path for the um, you know the flight plan we set, which we're not going to do because the mountains are in the way. So we're actually going to turn off auto auto um, the altitude hold here again and start gaining some altitude. As you can see, we have a massive peak coming up ahead, and I'm still confident that we can get this heli even higher. We are pushing the torque, that is for sure. Um, but I believe we can get up there and look at that easy now passing 8,000 feet uh, our torque is at 102 so we're, we're pushing it but we're still not completely uh, out of our range man look at that look down and just I mean I, I wish you guys could seriously see like see it the way I see it you're seeing what I see but you're not seeing it the way I see it this headset is tricking my brain right now into thinking that we are 
8,000 feet up over the ground. And that, I mean, that looks like a drop down there. And I mean, it's, it's snow top mountains look gorgeous as well. Wow. And then having the, the low fog and whatnot really adds to the picture. Got some beautiful peaks over there on our left as well. Our passengers behind us, they're doing all right. Uh, we're still not too high. We don't need oxygen. We're, we're good to go now still. I wouldn't worry too much about that. One thing that's beautiful uh, as well about this, uh, the Airbus helicopters, not just this one, but a lot of the Airbus helicopters because is the auto trim feature. Um, controlling helicopters are, are pretty challenging if you're not used to it. And the auto trim is basically, I can just move my, move my, my joystick here up, and when I let go, it keeps it there. I'm not pressing a trim button to trim it to that position. Like literally I move my joystick to where I want it to stay, I put it there and boom, it's gonna say it like what's that five degrees nose down. I can put it level, let go of the joystick, and it's gonna hold that. I can turn left like that, let go of the joystick, it's gonna stay there. Turn right. You, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm talking about. Um, and so that's one thing that makes this helicopter so much easier to fly than the others is just that auto trim feature. Let me tell you something. If you're the kind of person that flies, you know, at thirty thousand feet and above all the time. That's great. That's fun. Um, I do it too, all the time. But you need to just, for once, experience this here. Oh my God, look at the way the snow is just melting and, and like going, like, look at that. I can't even, I'm speechless. <laughs> oh my God. You, you, I'm a loss of words right now, man. I'm speechless of, of just a view and just this. The, it's, it's so grand. Does that make sense? It's like if you were to go to the Grand Canyon or something, and you you just look at it, you just at all of it, and that's kind of how I feel. Even right now, I'm not even like I feel like I'm actually here, even though I'm not. I would love to come out here and see this for myself someday. Um, I may get to, may not. Who knows? But this is like the next best thing. And what I was trying to say was like, you know, try something different for once, you know, uh, and you know, maybe you don't want to try the H-160, maybe try one of the free helicopters first. Um, oh my God, I can't even talk. Whatever, man, just try VR. <laughs> just try VR, try flying a helicopter. H-160 is a great option for sure. High performance group killed it. If you're a heli per helicopter person, this is gonna be a must have helicopter for you. Absolutely. Um, if you're thinking about picking up VR, just do it. Um, save up for it, or, or get one that you can afford. But man, these are going too fast. We're going 160. I think our ground speed was 180 right now. So we're booking it. We're still at 9,500. Pull the nose up a little bit and lose some speed. We're getting pretty close. We're like, we're inside 15 miles away from uh, our destination. All right, coming over this mountain, we should see our destination underneath us. I'm gonna go whip here to the left. Oh, there it is right there. Look at that, look at that tiny little airport. Jeez, I'm gonna come down the throttle here, start losing some altitude. There it is. Cool. Man, what a flight. There it is, there's our airport right there, covered in snow. And again, here in VR, I can really get a sense of just how high we are. We're actually losing quite a lot of altitude here, dropping about 2,000 feet per minute right now as we speak. We were just up there, and now we're down here. All right, start the gear down. Gear's coming down. But if, the way you get out of it is you just want to turn left or right and get out of your own wake there until the aircraft stabilizes. Alright, we're looking good. Again, we're not necessarily trying to land on the runway, but we'll use the runway as guidance to get us into here. We're actually still 4,000 feet up right now. Keep that in mind. We're not going to get the best performance performance from the rotor here at this altitude. That gear is down, three green and indicated. Our pocket brake is off. Let's turn it on if we want. 
coming in over the runway. Oh, this looks nice. And again, we could bring it in just like a plane and land it straight up if we wanted to. But I'm going to use it to hover taxi our way over to the helipad. And we'll put it down there. Ah, that's really nice. Pretty cool airport. Very cool airport. I'm going to land it. I'm going to land up here. It's much nicer up here. Got Brightling over there. That's a nice hover taxi going right now. We're still under 20 knots. I'm about 10 knots. Majeve Alt Support. Aero Club. I was going to put it right in here somewhere. Right in front of the building. And pull back. There we go. And set her down. Nice. That's probably my best landing so far. I right, will set our brake. Shoot and roll backwards. Put it back into idle. Or a cutoff, actually. And shut her down. There it is. We made it. Open the doors up. Welcome to Majeve. Alright, beautiful. Hopefully this video came out okay for you guys. I've really enjoyed this flight. I really thoroughly enjoyed this flight. It was such, I mean, a speechless experience. It's everything. Uh, can't wait to show you guys the next one. I'm going to try out a few other aircraft here in VR and Microsoft Flight Sim, as well as some other games like DCS World and some train stuff. Who knows? Either way, man, I've been really enjoying uh, flying in VR, and uh, I can't wait to do more with the Airbus H160. Well, until next time, remember you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all. You got peace, love, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time, next video. We out.